Good morning everyone. This is Andrea and Stephen from Pin in the Atlas on a chilly morning in Georgia. Where are we today? Funny you should ask. We're at the Central State Hospital located in Millardville, Georgia. As you can see behind us, this is one of the many abandoned buildings that was a part of this entire complex. There's over 200 abandoned structures on these lands. And we're going to explore some of them. But talking of which, could you imagine back in those days being put into an asylum like this or a hospital like this just because you were epileptic or an idiot? What constitutes an idiot? I know quite a few of those. <laughs> but on a serious note, yeah, those are uh, those were reasons people would be institutionalized, and uh, by today's standards, that's just not acceptable. Um, back in those days, you know, they thought they could treat some of those disorders, and in the early days, you know, they did have the patients outside learning how to garden and, and paint and do things like that. So they were legitimately trying to help them. Yeah, it wasn't until later on that uh, the shock therapy treatment and the unmentionable stuff started happening. Yeah. And uh, this place was originally established back in the mid 1800s. So, and the Dr. Green, Thomas Green, who founded the place, he had the best interests for the patients at heart. Yeah. So stick with us. We think this is going to be quite a video. Let's explore. Here at the footsteps of the green building. This is just sensory overload. I'm uh, extremely excited about this. On this property, there's over 200 abandoned buildings. We're told we're not allowed to go inside. Get a sneak peek. Yeah, a lot of peeling paint. But just look at the, the state of this building. Try and walk around the back. See if we can peer in any more of these windows. Found another window. Have a peer inside. Can you hear a car passing in the background? There is a road that this is on around the entire complex, so people do come through here. And here's another little room. A lot of cabinets up there. Again, peeling paint. Probably lead in there, mold. That's, uh, it's quite eerie walking around here, especially when it's quiet. See these giant buildings. Just completely empty. On the side of the building. Look at how the vines have started to grow up to the top. So this is a big open area. Those window frames are all covered with like thick chicken wire. So don't know if this was an outside area for the nurses or patients to come get some fresh air or maybe the smoking area. Definitely got that cool creepy vibe going to it though. Here. Got some 
some storage materials or something in there, it looks like. If you look at the over at the very back, there looks like one of those chairs right over the back. I can't really tell. Me. We've just been chatting with uh, one of the security personnel over here, and we've been granted access to the church. Here we are at the front. Let's go in and take a look. I like the colors of the building. Just kind of really pops. building. Some old photos of it in the inside. You can pause and read all of that if you'd like to. I'm gonna walk around and show you what it looks like now. Right here in line with the front doors. Let's see I can't get the whole building in height wise. I'll show you the wing over here. beautiful minus some of the sun glare we'll come back show you this side very impressive building it's beautiful isn't it absolutely let's peer through some windows shall we Say it's a shame. Can't get into the, any of these buildings. And one of the reasons is because people have broken in, started some fires, been destructive, caused damage to these buildings. And uh, unfortunately, because of that, they do a strict no trespassing in this entire area. There is security all around. Like I said, we were speaking with uh, one of the heads of security. A uh, very nice gentleman told us about a lot of stuff here and just kind of said, you know, it's, it's because of those people that do break in unlawfully and destroy things that they've had to lock it up and become so strict. And it's unfortunate because he said we would love to have these buildings open and have people come in and take tours. And create a lot of revenue for the area too to help help these buildings because unfortunately they're left to decay there's not enough funding to keep them operational <clears throat> they're not operational but you know in a state of able to tour through them so as long as we stay on the sidewalks he said we're perfectly fine and we've been given permission to peer in any windows that we like. Yep. As long as we don't cross any no trespassing signs. And that's mainly for safety purposes as well, because a lot of the buildings are in such bad repair that uh, they're falling down. Yeah. Not very exciting. It's just an office. Yeah, a few leftover bits. to come down this way because this just looks cool can we see in there well there's uh looks like old Christmas decorations and things in there And those 
Those doors are all covered up. Uh, what do we have down here? I've got a clock in there. There's metal shelving in the back and a mirror. Really dark little wing, you can just barely see a drinking fountain down there. You can see in those windows, there's boxes, a lot of stacked up boxes. This building kind of reminds me of the Ohio State Reformatory yeah. that we wrote a blog on. Yeah. And that looks much like the other side. It'd be like a maze going through there, all the rooms. I'd have a field day. If only. Here is the John T. Brantley building. And unfortunately, this one's so unstable and unsafe, everything had to be boarded up. The old school fire alarm. The side of the old Brantley building. And again, massive. It is a shame that a lot of these buildings have finally gotten to the point where even trying to restore them isn't feasible. So eventually, either by natural means or mechanical, they will come down. Here's the gates for Cedar Lane Cemetery. There's an interesting story behind this place. Now there were about 25,000 individuals buried here. Way back when a landscaping crew, because the graves weren't marked, there was just numbers. Landscaping crew came through and decided it would be much easier to cut the grass if all these markers weren't here. So they ripped them up and put them in a pile. There they laid forgotten until 1997. That's when they realized that this whole area was used for a cemetery. Now, unfortunately, there were no records of where anyone was buried. So as a memorial, they placed all those metal stakes here. This angel statue was placed here to be the perpetual guardian of the 25,000 lost souls laid to rest in these grounds. Now the reason that they were all buried here is quite sad. See that they had no family. The family was unwilling to pay high burial costs or they had no way to reach out to anyone. So this is where they were interned. A simple patient number that unfortunately was removed from their final resting place. So they will remain here, nameless and forgotten about 
for the rest of the time. Here's marker number 8261. Resting here at the base of this tree. Now, like we stated before, this place is just massive. Uh, we're not gonna be able to film all the buildings here. But with over 12,000 people living on property, doctors, patients, all that, you know, the kitchen was one of the largest kitchens, I think, in the U.S. It made 33,000 meals a day. And then another thing that you think about is laundry. You need to have clean sheets, clothes, gowns, everything. So this was the laundry building. Quite a bit larger than your local laundromat. I see that's also got a, a little chute there. You can imagine like a truck parked there, clean laundry being loaded into the back. Let's see if we can peek inside. Ah, there's too much glare. You can see that window there in the back. There's some uh, columns, walls, a few pieces of machinery left in there. Not a lot. But you can imagine how many loads of laundry they would do a day. Pretty incredible. So the church, there's a big no trespassing unsafe building. Can't really see in, but you can see that there's also no roof to this building. So very unsafe structurally. You can see the peeling paint. You can bet your life that's all lead paint. All right, we're now around the front and or the back side, however you want to think about it. These windows are able to peer in and you can see the state. The mess, you can smell the mold coming through this little spot here. Definitely don't want to go in this building. There's a better shot of the, the missing roof. And some more inside. So it's all just collapsed in. What a shame. Entryway. of the same over here very thin on this side so that's a little closet area run back there I can barely make out one more room there it might be the bathroom it looks like on that side I know you can't see because of the glare just on but kind of show you this is another very large building so we'll walk around this side, next to the road. Because that's one of the things we were told. As long as you're visible, 
when security passes by, they can see you're not doing anything wrong. They'll pretty much wave, just let you take your videos and your photos. But if you come here in your car and you try to park around back or kind of hide yourself, then uh, that's when you will be asked to leave. Looks like I'm sure I've stated before, and I'm sure I will state it again. You have no idea how badly I want to get into these buildings. And truth be told, there's some areas you can get in. But it's just not worth the risk. I know some people get a little bit of a thrill going into places they shouldn't be going into. But I think it's better if you've got permission. Because then you can spend as much time as you want in there. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Because you're not. And that's all we want to do. We just don't want to document these places. Because it's incredible. Just pieces of history. Just left here. everywhere. Yeah, I'm not really going to be able to look through these windows. The blinds are all pulled. So this was the Yarborough Rehabilitation Center. Built in 1962. Well, let's see if we can get a peek up here. I don't know if the glare is too bad. All right, let's go see what's next. Here is the John Doe greenhouse, part of the groundskeeping department. And when this hospital was originally opened, part of the therapy for the patients was helping around the grounds doing gardening, general housekeeping things. You gotta make them feel important, give them some duties, help them through. Just wonder how many patients had green thumbs. Here is Howell Hall, erected in 1940 for the Milledgeville State Hospital in the state of Georgia. I can get a sense of scale of that building. As you can see right down there, that's Andrea. And for a size comparison, those of you that don't know, Andrea is built like a brick house. She's six foot five, 280 pounds. It's a lot of women. So you can see this building is absolutely massive. All right, she'll kill me. She's five, four and a half, about 110 pounds. But still, it's a pretty big building. Let's go get a closer look. Look at the discoloration on the stonework up there. And on these steps. Oh, see here it says 1939. One year before it says above the doorway. That must be the, uh, uh, what is it, the cornerstone of the mm -hmm. building? first one placed. Oh, wow. Let's 
See, this will give you a sense of why some of these buildings are so dangerous to go inside. So that's all lead paint that's peeling. And the mold, you can smell some mold. You don't know how structurally sound any of these things are. And I know it's killing me. I want to get in there so bad. That's just so impressive. Somebody's uh, attempted to get in there. It's massive. It is. Almost looks like two separate buildings. They joined it together. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, looking at it on the map, it looks like a, it's built in the shape of an H. Mm. quick peek through this door here. I'm scouting through some of the other windows. And again, I think they're just too high to, to peer in. And some of them look pretty dark, so you may not be able to see anything anyway. And the stairway. Now it would appear that this is the front of the building. You see there's an awning extending off the, the front doors. And a big turnaround here that I'm standing on. One of the things that makes this worse is some of these patients literally spent their whole lives at this hospital. And when they died, they were buried out here with just a patient number, not even their name. No family came out to see them. People probably don't even know that this is here today. They're just numbers in the ground. And the leaves are covering up a lot of them. Very unfortunate. Now we don't know exactly how this works. We do know that the numbers imprinted on these were patient numbers. This one's number three. So we don't know if that means that this was a third patient or if they were just given that number. But this is the lowest one we found. And these poor souls are completely forgotten. I'll show you what I mean. Look at the overgrowth. There's a marker there. There's another marker here under these, this, underneath this bush. 
There's two more over there. And they're just, they're everywhere along this hillside. Buried. I actually tripped on one. They're just so overgrown. Nobody knows that they're out here. Landscaping hasn't come through to do anything with this land in a very long time. Okay, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video at Milledgeville Central State Hospital. We hope you enjoyed getting a view of all these buildings from the outside. Uh, we know we did. It took us two days to film here. <laughs> There's so much to see, and we didn't get it all in. Um, obviously, like we always do, we want to leave some room for you guys to come and explore some of these things. We think it's... We like to give you a little bit of a taste uh, as much as possible, but coming to see some of these things in person is is well worth it. It's incredible. So on that note, get out there, go and explore, put another pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. And remember, if you like what we do and you want to help support this channel, we have a PayPal and a Patreon. The links will be down in the description below. Thank you.